I was going to Taji Station to pick up some fucking power converters. Like and subscribe to Miniature Dark Universe, you fucking space wiper. No, I don't want to. It sucks. Hello, brave subscribers and wonderful guests. Welcome to another round of Miniature Dark Universe. We're going to build our KNIL armies using Peter Pig and QRF figures. And we're going to add some uh, head swaps with Peter Pig heads. Peter Pig doesn't have the KNIL hats, but I'm just using Belgian carabiner hats from their World War I range. They're close enough for me. And then I've got uh, some of the helmets over there on the right. I'm going to swap out the heads on the QRF guys in particular because they're slightly smaller, but that's going to work out because the, um, the ind indigenous sort of uh, Indonesian guys are a bit shorter and then our European Dutch fellows are a bit taller. So um, as long as the heads and the helmets and the hats are all the same size, they're all going to work out together and look good based on the same bases. So we're going to cut them off with a good pair of side cutters and then we'll drill it out and peg them in use one of these guys um, as like a center punch for your drill so your drill doesn't dance all over the place when you're trying to put the head in place. You're going to need a pin vise which is uh, an essential tool if you're going to do some geeky hobbies, some super glues and a needle file. A round needle file is the best for doing figures especially for doing the heads. So yeah, you do your pilot hole, you drill it in, you hit it with your super glue, and then I use some accelerant. I just poured it in a Tamiya bottle here, and I apply it with the dental pick. Just stick it in the uh, accelerator and dab it onto the figure, and it'll go in. And of course, some uh, magnifying glasses will help you out as well. So your figure's all clean. You're going to snip the head off in sections. Don't do it all at once because you'll cut too much of the collar off and that's not going to look very nice. So be careful as you go, snip it in sections, then use your round nose file, get any of the flash off the figure. I also have that brass brush there that's really good for taking off some of the oxides that are formed from the casting. So here I'm just filing out the shape of the neck around the collar using the wire brush. Then I'm going to punch a hole in, a pilot hole, get it ready for drilling. And then drill that baby out, making way for the post that comes already in on the head that you get from Peter Pig. I cut those posts off good and long, and then I'll trim it to size later. You don't want a short little post because you want a lot of uh, surface area for the glue so that your head is glued in there pretty well. So I stick it in. Yeah, I got to trim it. So we're going to snip that off. Dunk. And then I'm going to score it a little bit with the cutters. So don't snip it too short, just little like that and like that. And that'll just hold some of the glue or give a glue a purchase area to go on. And then we stick it in and turn the head in the orientation that you want. It doesn't have to be going the same way as the figure's head was going. You can get nice poses by just simply turning the head. And then we're ready to glue it. I don't normally glue from the bottle, but in this case you can. So you put a little dop of glue on. It's not such a precision thing to glue. Get it in place. Make sure the head's turned the way you want it. And play with it a bit. For some reason the uh, fast drying glue doesn't dry that fast. It kind of pisses me off. And then you get your accelerant and a dental pick. Fire that in there, get a drop on and touch it. Just, you just have to touch that in and it's done. 
the KNIL uh, helmets had a little leather flap on the back. Um, they called it a sun helmet. It looked bloody hot to me. So I just make those with uh, green stuff, or you could use any two-part epoxy putty, but I use green stuff. Um, and it looks pretty good. So I swapped the helmet on this guy, and you can see the little green sun flap. So there's your green stuff. Green stuff can be a bit of a dick to work with, but it uh, helps to use water. Um, and I have a multitude of little sculpting tools. I actually think that's some kind of a cuticle pusher I just showed you there. So just pick off the piece you want. You might have to go back and take off a little later if it's too much. This Peter Pig figure just had, that's the helmet that came on it. It's one of the Peter Pig Dutch World War II range. Nice figures. So yeah, I got the right size. Just gonna stick it on. And that sun flap on the back, sort of a rounded shape in the corners and it went from one ear to the other ear around the back of the head. So the ears give you a pretty easy margin to shoot for. And I just work it around. Make sure that the water doesn't get underneath the putty though, um, because it's gonna just keep coming off and boy, will you ever swear a lot. <laughs> it can be a real son of a bitch. So just, uh, just a little word of warning there. But you just work it around and keep going until you get it the shape that you want. And this green stuff, I usually let it dry overnight and by then it's good to go. Figures are all ready. You have the head swapped and the sun flaps converted on the helmets and they're clean. And we're going to start in with our priming coat. So I'm gonna use um, your Vallejo Surface Primer black and I'm just going to shoot in a bit of the uniform green that I'm going to use for the uniform color just a bit and I'm just going to go for a really dark green and usually for yeah like a green figure I'll go for a dark green um, khaki sort of brownish colors I use a dark brown and and for grays like German grays and stuff I use black straight up so here we'll make a really dark green we've added just enough green into the black primer to give it a a greenish tint. Obviously we want more primer than just regular paint. We're going to go around and paint these guys up. Their primer, let them dry, and now they're ready to start painting. So the dark dark green will just make our extreme shadows in between the uh, shirts and the pants and, and all the different equipment. So we'll do like a block painting technique. And what we're going for here, <clears throat> excuse me, got something in my throat here. <clears throat> What we're going for is really contrasty. So when they're on the table far away from your face, you can still see some of the details and we'll probably make them a little brighter than what reality would be. But I think at the end of the day, it kind of works out and then you don't have these drab, nondescript things on the table. So we'll get into the colors. I'm just going to do steps for this stage and see how this one works out. So let me know in the comments below if, if this is helpful as an alternative to actually filming me painting because I feel like I would have a hard time keeping it in to focus for you guys and you might have a better time seeing it this way. Plus I'm sure you can all imagine what a balding 52 year old guy looks like painting. It's not very elegant so why don't we just go with this. Um, so yeah without further ado for our Caucasian guy um, the, the shadow layer of paint is just a mix of medium flesh tone and hull red. So I've just put a, a bit of the hull red in. Um, you could use other colors in place of these flesh tones too if you don't have these exact colors. I wouldn't buy like, you know, say you had chocolate brown instead of burnt umber, just use that. Or some people use this really nice color, it's like beige red or something. I think it's very close. That's sort of what I was aiming for with this mix. So for these flesh tones at least, you can be a bit more open with the colors you use as long as they're sort of in the right range. Now with the guys with the more Indonesian flesh tones, I tried doing like a, a, a more, you know, like a realistic Asian skin tone, but the figures are so small that when they were far away, like you can very, you can't hardly tell the difference um, between like your European Dutch guy and your Indonesian guy. So I kind of went purposely a little dark on them, but I, I do like the way it turned out. So for them, I used a burnt umber 
for the for the shading coat. So for the Caucasian guy getting our medium flesh tone down, I mix sunny skin tone with medium flesh tone. I feel like it gives you a more realistic kind of looking flesh color and we're just going to paint in the fingers and some of the areas in the face, the nose, the cheeks and ears and leave some of the original color where it would naturally be shaded. For our flesh highlight, we're going to keep the same mix of the sunny skin tone and medium flesh tone, which was a 50-50 mix. I forgot to mention that in the last slide there. And then for the highlight, we're just going to add some basic skin tone and just put some highlights on the fingertips, the knuckles, along the top of the nose, the cheekbones, the top of the ear, you know, wherever the sun would hit the highest highlights. And then we'll move on to our next color. Then for a Caucasian skin tone, I take my high highlight mix from the previous slide and I put the tiniest amount of red in to make like a pink color. Like just, a, you don't even need that much red. And just make it a bit pinkish and I add it to the backs of the hands and into the cheeks. And I find it just gives a bit more variety to the tone. So from far away, to me it looks a little bit more realistic and less monotone. So my middle flesh tone for the Indonesian guys is going to be flat earth. And it's, again, it's a bit darker, but then the, uh, you know, in the high highlight that I'll put on in the next slide will probably be where the mid tone should be. But once again, I feel like when I do it a bit darker at a distance, it actually looks better. If anything, I think the, the European guys might be a bit too light. <laughs> I should darken up all my flesh tones a bit, I think. Um, but yeah, that's so flat earth. Then for my high highlights, I added in desert yellow. Again, about a 50-50 mix, but you can regulate that however you see fit. And if you wanted to put on a further highlight, you probably could just by increasing the amount of desert yellow. And so you end up with something fairly contrasty, but from a distance, once again, I think it looks, looks pretty good. It definitely looks like different than, than the Caucasian guy, so I think it's on the right track. For the first uniform color, I use uniform green, which is quite, quite bright. I looked at uh, quite a few uniform examples, like here's the Osprey book where they're quite washed out, almost like an Australian or US Marine. And then you've got some reenactors, and I don't know if those are accurate, but they're a bit greener. Here's a museum piece. This could be an actual uniform. It's very green. So there's there's different variations of the green. So I chose this uniform green as my basic green and then I'm going to lighten it down and kind of wash it out a bit. And again I am going to go a little bit brighter than, than true to life just so that from a distance it kind of balances out. The first highlight we're going to add some Iraqi sand. So it's roughly about you know, two parts of the uniform green and one part of the Iraqi sand. You don't want it, you don't want your first shade or your first highlight to be too bright. So just, yeah, keep it within reason. Like what I got here is good. It's looking pretty shiny because I put um, acrylic retardant in my paint so they don't dry out as I'm using them. And also they kind of, you can blend them pretty nicely once they're in almost like oils. Not quite as good as oil, but it's not, not bad. So yeah, we're toning it down a bit. And another thing I would say too, when I'm doing uniforms, I don't use a bunch of different colors for shading. I, I just take the base coat that I'm using and then I'll lighten it, usually with a buff or something like this Iraqi sand, maybe sometimes with a lighter gray, never with white usually. I find if, when you have something with the original color mixed in, you can never go wrong with that highlight color. And uh, you might need to buy less colors too than if you're using a different color for each thing. You know, you, you'll probably have greens and tans and things, but uh, yeah, if, I just find you can't go wrong if you use your base color and then just lighten it with some other color. Then for our final highlight on the uniform, we're going to just add more of the Iraqi sand to the mix we already have. So roughly, you know, one to one maybe or just as bright as you want it. We're just hitting the very highest areas of the folds in the clothing um, or any areas that you want to really accent, but just be careful not to overdo it because then it's gonna look a little bit wanky. So, yeah, having done that, we've completed our uniform color. 
I don't know why, but this color was my favorite part <laughs> for some reason. I like that the, uh, the putties were a different color than the uniform. So I used US Field Drab, and then I just lightened it up with the stone gray. The detail on the QRF figures is a little rough, so I just basically painted the lines in, and then just highlighted again the high points with some stone gray. And that's about a, that's about a three to one mix. And I didn't go with a third highlight for that. I thought that was adequate enough. On to the helmets, we use brown violet, which I think is now US olive drab, but my old <laughs> bottle is still brown violet for the main color. You could also use, I think, um, olive gray, another Vallejo color. These are all Vallejo colors. Um, the actual Dutch camouflage paint was something like Ligergrün or something, which basically translates out to green-gray. Um, so, yeah, uh, in this case, though, I used brown-violet. And then that sun flap, the leather flap on the back was made out of black leather. I don't know why they would have used bloody black. That seems like it would be hot as hell with the sun beating on it. But it is black. And so when I'm doing 15 mil figures, I do all, all the stuff that should be black with black gray. And I feel like that looks better. Um, it looks really great if you're doing like a Panzer Crewman and, and you, you appreciate them black and then paint in the first coat with black gray. It looks nice. So that's how we begin with our helmets. The highlights on the brown violet, I added a bit of middle stone just to hit the tops of those rivets and you know the edge of the helmet in the very top. And then my black I always highlight with some dark gray and then just a small amount of neutral gray at the very high highlights. And then it uh, makes your black a little more three dimensional. Sorry, you can't even really see it in that picture, but you will um, later on in some of the pictures. So yeah, it was kind of a dick there, wasn't I? <laughs> The other part that's black that I just almost forgot to mention is that little medallion on the front of the helmet. So just painted, it, you know, I think it's some kind of like bronze or something, but it, it looks it looks pretty black. Or it's like a darkish gray or oxided bronze, but it looked like dark gray. So I just painted it the same as my blacks and it, it looks good. For all the leather bits, like the, uh, the belt, the ammunition pouches, the hat band, there's leather trim around the perimeter of the, the hat visor, um, the straps on the water bottle, they're all going to be leather. And for this, I used flat brown. And I'll use any number of reddish browns for leather, or, or like saddle brown or whatever. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is, is the Peter Pig figures don't come modeled with the leather sort of Y harness on the web gear. But the QRF guys do. Um, that's kind of too bad. But a lot of that's obscured by the bread bag and the gas mask bag. So maybe it's not such a big deal. I might just be uh, a bit uh, OCD about that kind of thing. Then to highlight leather, whatever brown I choose for whatever figures I'm painting, I always like to highlight it with orange brown. I find the orange brown just gives it a really rich color for the highlight and it, it does look good for leather, but it just looks good in general too. It mixes well with all the other browns. It gives it a, a nice punch for that highlight. And that would be the leather completed. Then for the large bag on the left side of the figures, or sometimes they have them strapped around their neck, I guess that's the combat ready position. That's their gas mask bag. And for that, I used Vallejo green gray. Don't be fooled by the Vallejo swatch. It looks a little bit different than on the actual figure, but that is green gray. It's probably looking more gray because the figures are so bloody green, um, but it's a good color for that gas mask bag. And then to highlight the gas mask bag, I mixed in Iraqi sand. And again, it's three to one ratio, roughly thereabouts. Not, not too bright. And for things like, like gas mask bags and bread bags, I'm just going to put one highlight on. I'm not going to go in and put multiple shade levels on. But you could, if you want, just add more of the Iraqi sand. The rectangular pouch there on the right hip is, I think it's a mess tin bag and that was a gray color so for that i used uh, neutral gray 
And once again, I added in a bit of Iraqi sand for the highlight. The bread bag gets a coat of the khaki. And to highlight that, I added in some dark sand. I just wanted to put a, a warmer highlight in, but you could totally use Iraqi sand too. <laughs> but yeah, I use dark sand. Then for the final steps, I do the rifle. So I use chocolate brown for the main color, and then I highlight it with beige brown. And then the black metal parts of the gun, I do the same as the black flap on the back of the helmet and the boots. The boots were black as well. And I always shade in my black with dark gray or neutral gray. As an alternative for neutral gray, I'll use London gray sometimes, which is a bit, a little even more bluey, I guess, maybe. Um, and the other thing that wasn't in any of these figures was one of the canteens. Some of them do have canteens. Paint them the same color as the putty. So that was the US drab highlighted with stone gray. And then the straps are the same color as the leather. The final step, I use this Deco Art Americana acrylic craft paint, charcoal gray. So it's a nice dark, it's not really gray, it's more brown, but it's a grayish brown. So it's great. And I use that as the base coat for my groundwork. So by painting the base that color, if you miss some of the parts or whatever, it's not going to shine through as a different color. It'll be the colors that rest. And then that's the main painting done. <laughs> Base work is laid down. We'll take some uh, dollar store deco art stones and just place them in strategically so that they look nice. We're going for kind of jungly floor during the monsoon season, which is when the Japan Japanese attacked uh, the Dutch East Indies, so it's wet. I painted in the remaining areas charcoal gray and then I painted the stones, various grays, brownish grays. And then I'll use this uh, golden acrylic gel that you've probably seen in my videos around the edges of the base. And that'll just make it so that we can handle it a lot and it's not gonna wear the paint off. This stuff is quite tough and durable. So it's uh, great for that. And it dries matte, so it's a good edge. And then I'll um, dry brush the base with some uh, of these craft acrylics. So I'll use the, the pebble gray here and the off-white. So pebble gray will be the first and or it's just pebble I guess. So that'll be the first color that goes down and then the off-white and I'll, I'll use the off-white more on the rocks and less pebble gray on the rocks and that should give us a pretty nice contrasty looking groundwork. I carefully dry brushed the groundwork and the stones and now I'm going to put on these photo etched plants. Of course this one's out of focus. Fuck you focus, wanker. Um, so this platoon is going to have these photo etched plants on it and that'll help also make this will be number one platoon and so there'll be one of or a few of these photo etched plants on each base for one platoon just just to help like recognize in addition to the label you know, first platoon will also have these um, photo etch sort of palm plants on. And yeah, I'm just, I painted them uh, Vallejo German extra bright camouflage green or something like that. And then I mixed in yellow to highlight the edges. Next is an undercoating of fine turf. I use watered down acrylic gel, the same stuff I painted around the edges. Carefully place it down. Make sure you get some around the feet too so it doesn't look like there's these bald patches of earth around all of your figures. That looks a little bit weird. And just take your time and then I dunk it in. I mix two different colors. There's like bright green and kind of a brownie dead green. 
Just get it all over the base, tap it off, brush it off, just like that. And then it should look something like this. And then I take it to a window or something and just blow off all the excess. And then it'll be ready for the next bloody step. I super glued the uh, palm plants on by a rock. And now here's my forest floor mix, which I put in a coffee grinder. It's actual leaves and twigs and stuff that I just grind up in the coffee grinder. And then I take coffee filter and cut it into these little diamond shapes that sort of look like dead leaves. They're kind of geometric, but from a distance, it looks pretty good. And here's the base with the, the uh, forest floor mix stuck to it. And now I'm going to add some flow improver. So this is an acrylic product uh, that you can use to increase the flow, obviously, of your acrylic paint, but it also improves the capillary action. Um, so you mix like, I think it's 20 parts of water and one part of this flow improver, and it'll help. So I'll soak the base with this and then I'll hit it with some of my watered down acrylic gel, and this will help it soak through all the groundwork. And then when that dries, it'll adhere it really well to the base. Um, and this stuff is great. And it's, you know, when you get it, when you buy actual art products, they're often way cheaper than when you buy a small bottle uh, of the equivalent hobby thing. And it says here, um, let's see 20 parts water yeah so i mean this thing's gonna last forever you know there's literally a few drops in this whole spray thing i don't think i'll spray it on though because it's going to soak the actual soldier so i'll probably put it on with an eyedropper and i'll make some of my acrylic gel and water it down and have that ready to go get this guy ready to go Then I'll apply the flow improver with the eyedropper. It just makes it more precision application with that, other than using a sprayer. And, just, and then I'll use the eyedropper to put on some of the acrylic gel, <laughs> which looks surprisingly and unfortunately like jizz. But it is not, I promise you. It's a bit depraved, this video, but not that depraved. This will dry up clear and matte, and it will be great. And as you can see, it does look good now that it's dry. Now um, the next step will be to add some of the grass tufts that are on the other bases. So here we have some wild meadow grass and we'll just glue that on. I got those on and it didn't overdo it. We don't want overkill. Now I'm gonna put some fallen twigs on the ground. These are oregano twigs that I've just broken up into bits and keep and I select out the size that I want and I'll uh, glue it to the ground and probably hit it with some uh, Agrax earth shade or some kind of a wash just to add a bit of darkness to it. Oh, there it is right there. So that'll be our next step and then we'll be close to done. I cut out one of my labels with a sharp, fresh blade carefully. If you wanna know how to make those, I'll put a link to my video on how I make the labels in the comments. I'm gonna use a green pen just to mark out the white paper on the back edge, or alternately, if you wanted to, you could just paint it in with the, the color on your base, in this case, charcoal gray. But I'm gonna use the green uh, just because. And then afterwards, I'll paint the edges again with that acrylic gel, and that'll prevent the color from coming off. It'll be really tough. And here it is glued down. I used the acrylic gel, watered down a bit, just a bit though, so it doesn't make your inks bleed. And um, yeah, this will help be how they look. So uh, that's it. I'm gonna post some of the uh, stills of the final things and thanks for watching and tune in for our next Miniature Dork Universe.